Hi guys and welcome back to another Thunder Tier 1 video here today. Uh, today's guide here will be about grenades, uh, it'll be about all the grenades in the game. Uh, there's currently four types, uh, I'll cover them all and try and give as much info as I can as well as some tips and tricks. Um, now just a quick note before we get into this, uh, sorry there's been a delay since the last video and this one, I have been unwell unfortunately. Um, but I've had a lot of this kind of noted down and um, I've had some bits of clips pre-recorded and um, some information already worked out a couple of days in advance. Um, but hopefully it hasn't been too long of a wait and I hope you guys enjoy it regardless. So now let's get into it. So first off, there are four different grenade types in the game. As you can see here, there's the M67 frag grenade. There is the M14 incendiary grenade. There is the M18 smoke and the M84 stun. Now, all of these definitely have their uses in the game. And to be honest, I think more smoke and stun needs to be being used by people. Uh, I think it's just a way that obviously people don't really know. This is in regards to PvP anyway. Um, necessarily what or how they work exactly so this is exactly what we're going to be going into here so we're just going to go for a little bit of background info first with the grenades and obviously with grenades you aim and you throw like pretty damn simple so yeah if it goes red behind an object or something that's because you guys are not throwing it quite correctly and it will not make it there or like at the edge here I'm trying to aim to throw it further than I physically can. Um, so when you're aiming a frag grenade or any type of grenade, you um, <clears throat> defaultly go into overarm throw. Now, if you hit X, this is the change fire mode button uh, by default in game, you will swap to an underarm throw to throw at a shorter distance, a closer distance, less power and such. And you can just hit that to change back again. You can see you do the nice little arm dance there. So, also with grenades, as you go to throw them, as you can see, you can't quite reach the edge of your sight range when throwing them. However, if you are to sprint with your grenade, you can throw it actually way outside your vision zone. So you can literally just aim as far as you can, literally go into the sprint, and before you even start sprinting fully, you can chuck it outside of your vision range. This works for all grenade types, not just stun grenades as I've got in my hand now. And obviously you can... Sprint forward a little bit for outside your zone and, I don't know, pre-frag behind, say, that truck over there if you would sprint and quickly let go and throw it and bam, whatever. So, what we're going to do is we're going to start with frag grenades. Now, this little wheel here I did cover in the controls guide. This is if you hold three by default, which is your grenade button. If you have multiple grenades, you will be able to swap between which ones here. As long as they're in your vests or your pockets, any grenades that are in your backpack will not be easily accessible and you will have to move them out of there first. So, we're going to move, start with a frag grenade. So, the frag grenade, on average, seems to have about a four second fuse from when it leaves your hand. So, like such. So four to five second fuse there. Now, the grenade, as you saw, will also bounce. So when it comes to throwing frag grenades, you might want to throw it slightly shorter of your target so it bounces and rolls where you need it so you don't overshoot your target. Like such, I aimed here and it landed behind the container. <clears throat> now, frag grenades, as you will see in this overlaying video, do damage at multitude of ranges, but they will not kill at all ranges. Now, fairly close to you, you will die instantly from a frag grenade going off. And as the, the further it gets from you, there, there's a range of which the fragmentation will hit you, and it will deal a varied amount of damage. And then once outside of this radius, it just won't affect you whatsoever. <clears throat> Frag grenades can be good, obviously, for killing outright, assuming people don't move away from them. The longer fuse time on the grenades means that if you're not throwing it a long distance, that the frag grenades, like, people will see the icon come up next to them. You have time to move. Um, 
it's best probably to run either towards them or to the sides of them uh, from the direction they came at you from because obviously if you run away from it as it comes at you it's going to roll after you and whatnot unless you can quickly get around the corner and so forth and you just don't want to kind of get caught with your pants down really as you ran away but the frag grenades are useful they do have a place uh, you could also use them just to flush people out of cover uh, if you would throw them at say someone behind a car or behind a wall um, in a window like you can chuck them up through windows um, and all of that sort of jazz you'll be able to get them through windows um, to even if you just push someone out of a room temporarily so you can cross the line of the window or something of the such um, it goes for all grenades uh, you can throw them through the windows now we should move on to the incendiary grenades these incendiary grenades, the M14s, are just their area of control grenades. Now, with incendiaries, as you throw them, they they will go off when they land. Now, incendiaries go off instantly as they touch the ground, as you will see. And they blanket an area with fire. Now, this fire deals damage as you stand inside it. But you can run through the fire. You'll take a little bit of damage. And I mean some people might know where you are. And all that sort of stuff from it. But you can run through them. Now. Because these go off on impact. They obviously do not roll. But they also do not have a fuse timer on them either. You could throw them as far as you could sprint throw them. And they won't go off until they touch the ground. They will go off if they hit walls. Windows stuff like that they don't pass through and land on the floor they will ignite or and detonate with whatever they hit same goes for like this pipe up here per se if you accidentally hit it there it will hit it and blanket the area now this kind of does blanket a bigger area almost because obviously it's gone off above and has spread out and around so it was a slightly bigger area or at least looks like it's a slightly bigger area will have the same stuff. Now these little embers will still hurt you if you stand in them until they have fully gone out. Like such. Now, incendiary grenades, like I say, can be very good for obviously blocking off doorways. They can be good for blocking off like stairwells and stuff like that. Just stopping people pushing or even like stopping people retreating. If if you're able to get like an incendiary grenade behind someone and then like flashbang them or throw a grenade in, you'll be really limiting where they can move. Uh, they'll either have to take damage from fire or they'll have to run at fire, um, meaning like you shooting. Um, so it can be a dangerous game to play uh, if you're getting boxed in by incendiary grenades and they will eventually kill if you stand in them too long. Now, next we're gonna go on to smoke grenades. Now, smoke grenades, actually, these go off and start flaring up. As they build a cloud, the cloud blocks vision from the outside and from the inside. Now, if you're sitting in the middle of smoke, you are actually rather hard to see. And that also goes for your enemies. You cannot see out of smoke and you cannot see inside smoke. The upside to this, however, is you can sit in smoke and see the footprint sounds as people, say, sprint around the smoke or past the smoke or whatever. This would be good on defense or attack. Um, either way, it depends what you want to do. You could also throw frag grenades through smoke, through doorways and such to uh, help block that vision of the frag coming in. Let's see, do it again. They start igniting fairly quickly but do take a few seconds to fully form into a cloud this will be useful as i say on both attack and defense whether that's hiding or you could use it to block an enemy's line of sight say there's a sniper in the distance or someone with a scoped weapon taking shots at you down a road or i don't know a, a, like pre-waiting on a corner you could smoke that corner to either force them to wait Make them pre-fire or make it so that they have to move now this could be useful for the rest of your team you 
or just in general just to ruin someone's day a little bit. Now finally, the final grenade is the stun grenades. Now these stun grenades are actually rather powerful. Not only do they blind you when they go off next to you, they screw up your hearing and they vastly screw up your accuracy if you were to try and blind fire someone. Now, stun grenades go off around two seconds after leaving your hand and they will go off in the middle of the air if you sprint throw them and you don't, they don't hit the ground. Now these can be really useful for stopping people holding angles, stopping people pushing objectives, flushing people out of corners and stuff like that. Some people will wait them out if you are to stun grenade an enemy sat in a corner because if you don't know they're there and they get stunned from just a random stun grenade coming in, they might just wait it out. You might move in, not see them, or something of the such, and it might work out for them. So be careful when using sun grenades, it won't necessarily flush someone out of a corner, um, but it is really useful to use. Now, I'm going to bring up some stats as much as we can for the grenades here from what I found out so far about them. Now, these aren't official stats in any way, shape, or form. Um, this is as much knowledge as I can give you for the grenades at this time. Now, bring up a list and we'll divide it into four. Try and give you their fuse timers or whether they go off on impact, uh, duration, stuff like that. Obviously, the distances are kind of a guess. Um, they'll be based off if the characters are kind of six foot bang on um, and stuff like that trying to get a rough measure there like that uh, I will try and get official stat numbers if I can possibly from the dev team they're currently not in the game in the system if you look at them they only give you the weight of the grenades and the point cost you do not get anything else in regards to the grenades themselves there. Now, hope you all have enjoyed this guide. If there's anything else that you guys would like me to cover, if you think there's anything I've missed from this one or a previous guide, please do let me know. I'll try my best to either amend them in a new video or add to them in comments or on a graph chart or document something like that that i can then paste in comments or paste as an update something like that now if you haven't already please do check out my realism campaign that has started i've got the first video out already i did that the other day um as i was becoming ill um link above and at the end of this video if you haven't already either i do stream on twitch uh i'll be coming back shortly now i'm feeling better um link for that is down below if you want to kind of see when these videos go live quicker then i do post the, that in my discord as well as when i stream there's also a discord link down below i'll post a link down below also to the rest of the playlist for thunder tier one and it will also be at the end of this video now if you did like this video then please do like subscribe comment if you wish any of that sort of stuff it kind of just helps the channel grow a little bit more if you think a friend would like the video please do recommend it same goes for any of the other videos. Now, thank you, Thunder. See you next time.